Hello and welcome back to the Monday, November 28th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. So after uh, this one week uh, break, we do have a couple of uh, diaries to go over. Of course, uh, not all of our handlers are US based. So for some of them, there was no vacation and uh, they jumped in to provide us uh, with some interesting stories. Let's uh, first of all, start here with Renato's uh, diary from I believe Monday. Uh, Renato uh, wrote about a recent log for shell attack. Log for shell actually sort of kept us uh, busy early December uh, last year. And yes, it's still a topic. US government recently sort of uh, made an announcement that they're still seeing uh, quite a few attacks for it. The attack that Renato saw wasn't so far uh, special in that it did use the Nashorn JavaScript scripting engine in order to then use a JavaScript code to then set up a reverse shell. Now, why Nashorn and why JavaScript? JavaScript, of course, now is different from Java. The log for J vulnerability was a Java vulnerability, but the Nashorn uh, JavaScript engine is created by Oracle and included uh, in the Java development uh, kit. So uh, that way, you know, you have it available. It uh, fits into Java, and that's why attackers, in this case, likely used it. For more details, including code snippet, well, uh, see Renato's post. And of course, links will be in the show notes. And one thing about uh, phishing or a lot of malicious emails in general is that hackers uh, try to create a sense of urgency. Uh, That usually is used to get users uh, to click on links without really sort of thinking through uh, what they're actually doing here. And in this case that Xavier covered, well, it started with the normal uh, rules that a a your email account is going to get deleted if you're not going to log in now to update it. But uh, what they actually did here to make this, uh, I guess, more plausible or even more urgent is that once you click on the link, uh, you're being directed to a standard phishing website that will ask you for your password. But in addition, it also shows a timer that will tell you how much time you have left before all your work is gone and including sort of a little scrolling feed of email addresses that are currently uh, being uh, deleted. Uh, So very nice sort of social engineering add on uh, to this relatively uh, old scam. Not sure if it actually makes it more plausible or less plausible. To me, it would make it less plausible. uh, But then again, uh, maybe for other users, uh, this will actually work. We have been talking a lot about uh, IoT uh, vulnerabilities and uh, with that by extension all the sort of industrial control system uh, vulnerabilities. Microsoft now has an interesting uh, blog post uh, that highlights uh, one particular issue here and that's the BOA web server. Um, You may have not heard about it but it is quite commonly used in these kind of systems. It's one of those uh, very small footprint uh, web servers and that's why it's sort of uh, popular and uh, well like similar web service it does have not only a number of vulnerability but also hasn't really been maintained since 2005 it was officially discontinued in 2005 uh, but is still heavily used in iot devices and uh, microsoft is pointing out how this has been used in a few attacks against the critical infrastructure uh, this year so if you are responsible for uh, this uh, kind of uh, systems then definitely you know, double check uh, make sure that you're not exposing that web server there may not be much that you can actually do in terms of patching since after all uh, the software is no longer maintained a couple tips like snore signatures also in microsoft's post Well, uh, last week uh, wasn't really uh, that super exciting. We really only had uh, one uh, Google Chrome uh, zero day that was patched. And well, uh, in years past, maybe that would have sort of uh, caused a big outcry Uh, these days. uh, Nothing really all that exciting, but uh, just uh, make sure that you uh, patched uh, Google 
Chrome. And probably a good idea just to do your usual uh, restart the browser, reboot your system and Mondays mornings as you're coming back from some downtime. And then interesting post by security company Cyber Vila looking into some of the risks of smartwatches here in particular the Bluetooth low energy uh, protocol being used by some of these uh, smartwatches. The risk here is that due to insecurities in the protocol and implementation issues it is uh, possible uh, to essentially uh, spoof messages that are being sent to the smartwatch that will appear like uh, they are essentially SMS messages or such uh, sent by the phone or however you're connecting uh, the smartwatch. This is a little bit an extension of a trend that has been going on for at least a decade now where uh, mobile devices tend to be an easier target for uh, phishing because mobile devices often uh, don't really display sort of the the full uh, headers or the full from address and uh, URLs and such like uh, users are used to on their desktop. So even on smartphones, users tend to more likely fall for phishing emails. Well, uh, this of course is even worse with the tiny displays of smartwatches and maybe something to include in your uh, cyber awareness uh, demonstration. Well, and that's it for today. We're sort of running out of time and nothing all that overly urgent. Uh, Maybe I'll uh, cover a couple more uh, stories from uh, last week in some of the coming uh, podcasts. Thanks, everybody, for listening. As usual, if you like this podcast, please recommend it. Please leave good feedback. As always, I'll do them because people are listening. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.